Have you ever wondered how old the prosperity gospel or prosperity theology is? This is an error that teaches that God promises tangible blessings in this life to those who have sufficient faith and good works. If you look on Wikipedia, you'll find that it has its roots back in the 19th century and that its major leaders, major proponents, began their ministries in the early 20th century. But today I want to show you that this error, like all important errors, is not new. It's old. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, going all the way back to the early church, uh, we can look in the writings of Augustine, uh, who, because he preached against pastors who promised physical blessings uh, to faithful Christians. Let's read a section of his sermon 46. But what sort of shepherds are they who, for fear of giving offense, not only fail to prepare the sheep for the temptations that threaten, but even promise them worldly happiness? God himself made no such promise to this world. On the contrary, God foretold hardship upon hardship in this world until the end of time. And you want the Christian to be exempt from these troubles? Precisely because he is a Christian, he is destined to suffer more in this world. For the apostle says, all who desire to live a holy life in Christ will suffer persecution. And you, you pastor that seeks your own interest instead of that of Christ, you insist on saying, if you live a holy life in Christ, all good things will be yours in abundance. And if you do not have children, you will produce offspring and show them to all, and not one will die. Is this the way you build up? Look what you do and where you build. This believer you build on sand. When the rains and storms come, when the wind blows, they will beat upon his house, and it will collapse. His ruin will be total. Take him off the sand and put him on the rock. The one you desire to be a Christian, let him be supported by Christ. Let him think on the unmerited torment of Christ. Let him consider the sinless Christ's payment for sins committed by others. Let him hear the scripture that says, The Lord disciplines his favored children. Let him prepare himself to be disciplined or renounce his status as a favored child. It sounds like this sermon could have been delivered today, right? But actually, it's more than 1,600 years old. His examples continue to be relevant, and I imagine that all of us could think of several more. Uh, here are three that came to me. First, I've known several couples that have struggled for years to get pregnant. They don't have any specific promise from God that he will give them babies. It's an extremely painful time, often particularly for the wives. As a pastor, what do you say to them in these circumstances? Do you say, like the pastor that Augustine mentions, if you live a holy life in Christ, you will produce offspring? Do you promise them something that God has not promised? Do you doubt their faith? A pastor, second, a pastor I greatly respect had a daughter uh, for just a few weeks before she was diagnosed with cancer. She died several weeks after that. Uh, must we assume that this was the result of a spiritual failing? Uh, or might the words of Jesus from John 9 apply here as well? He said, it, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Third, uh, a young granddaughter of some of my friends died after a long in illness. What would have happened to their faith if I had told them what this pastor says here? If you live a holy life in Christ, you will produce offspring and show them to all and not one will die. It ought to be obvious, but worldly blessings are not perfect indicators of God's approval. He does bless us, but he also gives us difficult trials. So what is the biblical basis uh, that Augustine has for this teaching? He cites 2 Timothy 3.12 and Hebrews 12.6, which promise persecution and suffering for followers of Christ. Besides these, we have James 1, of course, and the many examples of faithful Christians in the apostolic church, people like Stephen, Paul, Silas, Peter, and more. Uh, let's take a quick look then at the life of one of the most faithful of these followers of Christ, the Apostle Paul. We see that he abandoned a lofty position in society. And what did he receive in, instead? He got imprisoned, he was shipwrecked, he was ma martyred, uh, and more. Uh, if he received all that, why not me as well? Of course, the Bible contains many promises of blessings for believers, not just in the age to come, but also here and now. So we might ask, what blessings did Paul receive uh, during his life? 
uh, he actually talks about two of them in Philippians 4. See if you can identify them. I rejoiced greatly, sorry, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at length you have, re you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be wrought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Perhaps the most obvious thing that we see in this text, the most obvious blessing, is Paul's ability to find joy in what God has given him. He learned to be content, knowing that in any situation, even the difficult ones, he, con he continued receiving undeserved blessings. But beyond contentment with any blessing, even the small ones, God gave Paul something else. He gave him a family that supported him and loved him. What was that family called? The church. The church supported Paul, both physically and spiritually. And we too receive many gifts from God in this life. Some of the most important are contentment and the church. But don't forget that God is not in our debt. Our faith and good works do not guarantee riches in this life. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Uh, if so, please like and subscribe in order to see more content like this. Also, if you or anyone you know would benefit from teaching like this in Spanish, click on the link on the screen uh, right here. I've recorded a video with the same content on my Spanish language channel. Thanks for watching.